drawing figures. That's what we're talking about in today's video. If you can draw a stick man or woman, you'll be able to master this technique. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, we do all things watercolor, lots of drawing tutorials, even a little bit of mixed media, business motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing, it's completely free. And if you click the little bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube. Now, I was chatting to somebody in the comments of one of my drawing videos this week, and they were talking about drawing faces, and they were asking about drawing figures. And I was about to refer them to the, uh, the video that I've got on how to draw basic figures using this kind of stick man technique that I've been teaching to my real life students for years. And I suddenly thought to myself, hang on, is that video actually on YouTube? Did I even make that video? Now, I had a recollection of making videos about this technique, but I realized at that point that it must have been either for something like an online course or possibly when the pandemic pandemic first hit and I had to make videos for my real life students so that they could study online. But whatever the situation, I realized I hadn't made that video at all for you here on YouTube. And it's such an easy technique. It really is so simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a stick figure, a stick figure like you used to draw at school. So what is a stick figure? What does it really represent? It represents a skeleton, doesn't it really? It's the bones of a person. And that's what we were trying to draw. We were just trying to draw the person's bones. And then from that point onwards, you might add clothing perhaps, or just flesh if you were doing a life drawing. But the stick figure itself represents the skeleton. Now, because we were children, we were drawing very simplistically, it's not exactly right, is it? There are a few things that are missing and a few things that are out of proportion, but nevertheless, it's still a valid way of drawing someone, of drawing an outline, a template of someone that we can then build up to make a proper little person in our paintings and drawings. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna start with that stick man or lady, let's not be sexist. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make five adjustments. So I'm gonna tell you five places you need to adjust that basic stick person. There we go, gender neutral stick person in order to make it more representative of an actual human being. And then when we've gone through those five stages, all of which are incredibly simple to understand, I'll do you some real life drawings from photographs of people in different positions so you can see how to actually take what you've learned and implement it to get really lovely, realistic little people in your drawings. So let's get started. So if we look at a basic stick person, there are two main areas where it's not actually physically correct. I mean, ignoring all the other stuff like proportions, there are two areas where it's actually physically wrong. And the first of those is that we have no shoulders on our stick person. Shoulders are really, really important to show the angle and the way someone's holding their body. But on a stick person, the arms are coming straight out from essentially what's the spine. So the first thing we need to do is to add shoulders to our stick person. So first of all, apologies if you can hear any whistling noises or dripping or rain noises. The weather today in England is sort of crappy with intermittent smells of unpleasant, but we shall struggle on. Now I'm gonna use a pen to draw with today. Now obviously I can't erase if I make any mistakes and I'm just giving you general principles today. So please don't throw a lot of hate at me in the comments. I'm getting awful lot of hate lately, but awful lot of uh, new subscribers too, so that's good. Right, so let's look at how you would draw a stick man if you were a child. So we would have our head and we would have our body, we would have our arms, and we would have our legs. So this is the principle we're gonna start with and we're going to improve. So I've got some photographs of people here and I'm gonna be working more with these later on. But to start with, let's just have a look, um, for instance, at these ladies here that are walking along a, uh, a road in rather a hot looking country. I wish I had that weather today, I can tell you. So if you look at the shoulders here, you see how this one is fairly level. This one slopes up, the same with this one here. So what we can do with the shoulders is we can do kind of a curved line. Even this lady here, who's sitting very straight and has quite square shoulders, we can still get that idea of a curved line where the shoulder blades are coming down. And so that's the line we're going to use on our little stick person. We're going to make a curved line and how we're gonna put it down will depend on the person we're looking at. Now look at this person here from the side. Of course, there's still a shoulder line here, but it's gonna be very much shorter and very much foreshortened. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So now for our stick person, what we're going to do is we're gonna have shoulders as well as arms and of course legs. 
So the second area, and this is almost a carbon copy of the first area, the second thing that we need to add is hips to our little stick person. Now, whilst shoulders can sort of move, you know, independently, hips really don't move that way. If you tilt one hip up, your other hip tends to drop down because of the way the bones are structured. And so to get a line in for where the hips are is really, really important for aligning the way that somebody stands or even the way that they're walking. So next we're going to add hips to our stick person. So now let's look at the hips and going back to the original photograph I was looking at, can you see here, look, I mean, the line of the clothing really tells a story here, doesn't it? So this lady's hips are definitely sloping this direction. Was this lady here, her hips are sloping this direction. This lady's hips are much more level. And this is all to do with the way they're walking and which foot they're putting forward first. Again, if somebody is side on, you're gonna have a shorter, more condensed line. But we're still going to have that idea of curved hips. So now with our stick person, we've got the shoulders, the arms. We're also going to have hips. Let's look now at our little person's head. Now, not only do stick people's heads tend to be much too big, if you look at the average person, and I say average person, and you look at the, uh, the height of their head and how many times you could sort of drop that height into the body, of course, this varies. It'll be a lot less for children. But nevertheless, the head fits into the body many times, whereas the stick person, the head is too big. But not only that, it's slightly the wrong shape. Now, we don't want to do anything complex. We're just making little people. But there's still a better way to draw that shape of the head rather than just a circle. And it's going to be slightly different depending on whether your person is looking forwards or looking to the side. Now, even though I wasn't particularly trying to adjust the proportions yet at this stage of the video, you can see how the proportions of this person are much longer than the proportions of this little person that we started with, which is more realistic. We'll talk more about that later in the video. But at the moment, let's look at the head. So we've done a circle so far for the head, but we can improve that. So a rough shape that you can do for a person's head that's facing forward is the shape of an egg. I'm doing this one a little larger just so you can see. So here is a shape that you can use for a person facing forwards. What about if their head is on the side? Now, once someone's head is on the side, what you get is you get an elongated shape. So you can see the back of the skull and this is the bit where the brain sits. And then you see this side over here is flatter. We've got the same for this uh, gentleman here. Looks like it was wartime, doesn't it? This gentleman here, you can see that he's got a bigger back of the head where his brain is and then the front is flatter. So once we're drawing someone's head on the side, we can say that it's flatter on one side and bigger towards the back. So if you were drawing a full person, you would have a neck like this or a neck like this. And depending how much on the side a person's head is will depend on how much of a curve you get at the back here. So the center line of these heads would be something like this. I've got another video all about drawing faces and putting center lines in, but for this video, we're just looking at people who are a bit more of a distance. We're looking at the whole figure. But as you put your head on the stick person, I want you to make it oval. So now we've got an oval head and we've got shoulders and we've got hips. One looks a bit rude, doesn't it? And now we've got legs as well. Now, in our stick person, the neck and the body are just one straight line. You might think to yourself, well, you need to do a separate neck. But actually, the neck and the spine are all one section of bones. Anyway, they're not the same bone. Of course, there are vertebrae going all the way up. But what we need to do is to be able to curve and to bend the spine in order that we can have somebody who looks realistic and is able to bend and to move. How much you see of the neck will actually depend. If somebody's leaning forwards or tipping their head downwards, you may not actually need to put any of the neck in the stick person that you're going to do for realistic people. But nevertheless, the next thing we need to be able to do is to curve the spine and the neck. So the next thing I want you to think about is the fact that the spine itself is not a straight line as we started out with. In fact, it curves. So look at this lady sitting down here. We can see her neck curves around here and then around her back, curves in slightly at the waist and curves round. Now we can't exactly plot where someone's spine is, but the more you do this, the more you'll kind of get a feel for it. Look at this chap here. We could kind of imagine that his neck starts to curve this way slightly, back to his waist and then bit more forwards here. This lady here, her neck is quite upright. And then we could say her spine comes around here like this. 
This gentleman here, his spine is much straighter apart from a bit of a curve at the neck. We could perhaps put it down like this. So the next thing you want to do with your stick person is to curve the spine. So now we've got an oval head. We've got a spine that curves and this will vary greatly from just a slight bend like this for somebody standing quite upright to something much more curved for somebody that's perhaps seated or bent over. We've got our arms, we've got our legs. So now we're starting to get a person who is much more realistically formed than the stick person we started with. And we're on our way to drawing a real person. As always, if you're enjoying this video, if you're finding it interesting, can I please ask you just to click that like button, that thumbs up, it really helps you with the YouTube algorithm. If you can like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people. At the time of making this video, I'm just a few weeks away from getting 100,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. Now the fifth adjustment we need to make to our person is to do with the limbs. So we need to be able to lengthen the limbs. Obviously we need to have legs that are longer than arms and we need to have joints as well. So we're going to have joints where there are knees and elbows. Now you can also for a stick person do hands and feet. That's a little bit less important especially if figures are some distance from you. It's more important if they're close up. Now I don't want to give you any specific proportions. You know how much of the leg would be thigh and how much of it would be shin you know, knee to ankle. Not only do these vary broadly between people, I mean, I'm five foot three and I've got quite a long body and fairly short legs. You could get somebody who is the exact same height as me, but they could have a short body and long legs. In other words, we might be the same height, but our waists might be at different heights. Now, I do a lot of sewing and dressmaking in my spare time, so I know all about this sort of stuff. It's amazing how much even people of the same height can vary. And that's without taking into consideration things like muscle mass or even just clothing. So I don't want you to have preconceived ideas about how long someone's limbs are, because not only do we have all of these variations, but then you have the variations that come from somebody being at a strange angle. Maybe they're crouched down. Maybe they're a footballer and they've got their leg in the air because they're kicking. Maybe they're reaching towards you. And so you've got foreshortening going on. So you want to try and free your brain of having these preconceptions of proportion. But nevertheless, we do need to lengthen the limbs and at least make sure the legs are longer than the arms in a standard stick person. And we also need to allow for those elbow and knee joints. So now we want to joint the arms and the legs. So if we look at this chap here who's standing fairly upright, We've got a bend in the elbow, another slight bend in the wrist. And again, with these two older gentlemen, we've got the arm comes down here and the wrist bends. But look at this chap here. We're looking at him from the side, so everything's foreshortened. So we've still got the top of the arm here, although it's shorter. But look at the amount that we've got from the elbow to the wrist. It's just this tiny area here. Making those observations is going to help you to get a person who's realistically stanced. Now, when it comes to the legs and indeed the arms I want you to remember that we're almost doing a skeleton here so the line that you're drawing for this chap's leg as we're making his skeleton his little stick person skeleton is not the outside here it's not the inside here it's dead center down the middle of the leg and the same with the arms we'll be taking the line through the middle of the arms without flesh without muscle without clothing and these center lines for limbs are going to help us to clothe the person in our picture so before we go on to some real examples, let's complete our realistic looking stick person. We have an oval head. We have a spine that curves. We have shoulders. We have hips. And now we're going to have arms and legs that joint. Now, whether you need to put an extra little bit on for hands and feet really depends on what you can see in your picture. So we've added shoulders, we've added hips, we've sorted out the shape of the head, we've understood that the neck and the spine need to be able to curve, and we've thought about the proportion, length and joints in the arms and legs. So now you've got your little stick person. How do you actually translate that into a drawing of a real person wearing clothing? That's what I'm going to show you now. So we're going to go through a few different examples, different types of people, different body shapes in different positions, so that you can take this technique forwards and use it whenever you need to depict a figure in your painting. So let's look at how we translate this into drawing real people. And again, because I'm using a ballpoint pen, I would usually be using a pencil and we would erase these construction lines. So this is going to look a bit strange, but it's just easier for you to see pen on the camera. People always complain they can't see the pencil. So 
Bear in mind that you won't need all of the lines that we've shown so far. You won't always need you know, every joint of an arm. You won't always see all of the neck, especially for people in the distance, you may only need a few of those lines. So let's look first of all at this lady here. So we've got the head, we're gonna do it oval shaped and yet do you see how high up the shoulders are? So because of the way she's probably leaning slightly forwards, you're not going to see an awful lot of the neck there. We've got just part of the arm showing here. Let's think about the spine and we already ascertained that the hips were going this way. Now, of course, you can combine all of these methods with things like checking proportions, something like the envelope method, whereby you check the outside shape of a person. But today we're just doing this very simply. And then what you can do from there, you see, is you start to add your clothing on. The lady's carrying a bag and we've got a hat going on here as well. As I said, given more time, you can get more accuracy. You see how we start to get an idea of a real person. Let's look at somebody else. So let's look at a larger one. Let's look at this lady here. I'm not going to do her to full size, but let's look at this lady here and the way that she's arranged her body. She's leaning against something. So we've got a tilt on the head. So we've got an oval for the head that's slightly on the side. So we're going to come out a little bit here. You can see where the neck comes down here. Now the shoulders are very, very foreshortened and they're also at an angle. So we've got something like this going on. We've got an arm coming out here. Let's think about how the spine is arranged. We've got the hips. I would say very, very foreshortened here. The arm is coming back down to the back side. We can't see the arm on the other side at all, but we have got the leg, which is at a tilt. Again, you can check where it comes out. It's actually coming out, you know, further forward than the head, coming back here. And then we've got the other leg, which is coming out fairly straight here. I think I have done this lady full size in the end. And then of course we've got the feet and we could check, you know, which shoe is higher than the other one. And here we've got the bones of a person to then work up with clothing and flesh, of course. So we can look here at the blouse, and the shape of everything. We can look at things like hair. And we've got the jeans, which are quite wide legged, almost like flares, aren't they? Other leg coming out in front. She's even got slightly platformed shoes. Lady after my own heart, like a bit of 70s styling I do. And then we'd have the center line down the face. And from there, we could start to put the features in. I've covered features in other videos, so we're not going to worry about that at the moment. The idea is just to use this stick person to get our body shape. And can you see how effectively this works? Let's do one more person. This lady is seated and her head is on the side. So let's start with the head here and the head's on the side. So we're gonna do that shape that we learned earlier. And then the spine pretty much comes fairly straight from there. We've got the shoulders, they're fairly square and there is a gap between shoulders and head. So we have got some neck showing, got quite square shoulders. Now from here, everything is very squashed up. So we want to start looking at proportions and we can think about how many times the head goes into the body. So we're looking at the hips being, you know, somewhere around here and they seem to be tilted somewhat. We can't really tell where the hips are on this one, but we can only put in what we can see. So we can take this arm down the side here and it comes here. You can see that she's fairly flat along the bottom here. She's just got one foot coming forward. So the hip for this other leg comes all the way up here and then forwards and down. And then we've got leg number two coming out somewhere like this and coming across. And we've got her foot being quite straight here. And we've got an arm coming down here, a little bit hidden. So we've ended up with quite a strange shape here, but let's go with it. So we can start putting details on. She's got quite a big hairdo here. Again, I'm not getting any kind of likeness with these, you understand. I'm just trying to get the shapes in. So we've got the hair coming down here. Of course, we've got the neck here. The edge of the neck is mostly covered by the hair. We've got this T-shirt that she's wearing. And then we can flesh out the arms. Remember that line of the bones there is just down the middle. 
you'll be adding the flesh around that. And of course, you'll need to take some time to do drawing of things like hands. They're quite complex. There's no point starting any of that until you've got these basic shapes right. Look at the T-shirt coming down here and then start to flesh out this knee. We've got the legging there. Again, you'll need to spend some time getting things like the shape of the foot right. But let's just start here. Got the other arm coming through here. I hadn't noticed before. We've got hand coming through here and lapping over. So the second hand is coming here, lapping over the leg. We've got the heel of her foot just sitting under her backside there. Again, once you've got this rough shape here, then you can define the shape of the head and the hair. You can start getting those features in, making all your adjustments. So to recap, whether you've got a tiny figure in the distance where you just need a few simple lines, somebody standing quite upright or somebody seated or bent over or doing any kind of sports or gymnastics, whatever they're doing, by using our adjusted stick figure, we can build the basic skeleton, the bones of a person, and then check the proportions and flesh out with muscle, with the curves of the body, and of course the clothing and hair. This is a method that's going to work for you every single time. As I said, it can also be combined with other scaling methods, some of which I've talked about in previous videos. And I'll also be making more scaling videos soon on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe. Now, do let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful. So let me know what sort of drawing videos you'd like on this channel. And also what kind of painting videos you'd like to see more broadly. And before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. Somebody said to me last week, where's the video description? It's below the video. If you're watching on TV, you may not be able to get to it very easily. But if you're looking at a phone or a tablet or a computer, just press the down arrow or click see more. It's the bit where I start writing things. You better expand it. And there's loads of helpful links in there. There's some free downloadable PDFs that you can grab for no money whatsoever, full of helpful painting and drawing tips. You can even take a free watercolor painting course. Also in the video description, you can find out lots more about my online courses, my free Facebook group, basically everything else that I do. And if you enjoyed this video, you can watch another one of my drawing videos right now.